in February in 2018, I got arrested by the Fiji police together with one of my journalists. It's to do with a story that the magazine had uh, published and it was posted on our website about a certain judge that has been told to go home, got uh, his contract revoked. So the police and the government were not pleased about the story. They said it was wrong and they assumed that um, it was a deliberate um, action on our part to so-called destabilize uh, members of the public of Fiji. So it was on a Sunday, we got hauled into the police station and we were questioned uh, for about five hours in total and also included leading the detectives to our office where they raided the office, they looked through all the uh, rooms and the materials in the office and um, also they confiscated both mine and the reporter's um, laptops and uh, mobile phones. Well, it was unexpected. Um, we were initially um, panicked when, when we got the call, but uh, after a while we, we got uh, uh, very quick support from particularly a, a leading uh, lawyer in, in Fiji law firm. They offered after I've contacted them, at the same time police had contacted us, they were at the police station and they came with two of their senior um, uh, lawyers. So one was with me and the other was with my journalist because we were interviewed separately. So they were with us all, all throughout the interrogation during the raid as well and the confiscation of the equipment. So we were supported and then the rest of the, the network of journalists in Fiji got wind of the detention, the arrest, and they, they, they posted up on, on, on social media, both on Facebook and Twitter. And I also learned later that the local media association president called up the, the commissioner of police to check on the status of uh, myself and my journalist. After I got the call and I was trying to um, process it, it occurred to me that I've been a journalist for over 30 years in Fiji and I've lived through and covered through three, four coup, military coups in the country and that was the first time ever for me to be called up to basically to be detained and and I, I was not prepared for it. So now I'm, I'm extra careful of uh, where I go now or what time I finish at work. Usually I try not to work too late at the office, working alone at the office at night and because we also discovered uh, three days after our arrest that uh, there was actually a bug planted into our uh, internet router and we got that because we asked a friend who's an IT expert to do an audit uh, very quickly. So we have to change our internet service provider as well as a result of that. So it just teaches me that as a journalist you just need to one, to be very sure of your sources and second, yeah, to, to take that extra care of how you report your stories and always as a backup to always have legal support. Well, it, it, it uh, initiated some discussions among the Fiji Media Association, uh, which we, we are a member, of how we need to offer a lot more support to journalists who are in distress like what we went through. And particularly to help independent and very small media organizations like our magazine. I mean, the biggest daily newspaper in Fiji had just gone through a lengthy, it took about two or three years of, uh, uh, of uh, court, court uh, trial. We, because they were charged with sedition. But they were able to afford that, although it cost them about $3 million. We don't have that kind of money. So there was this discussion, maybe we should, we should all um, fundraise for a, a pool of funds that will be managed by the media association that can then assist uh, journalists who are in distress, who need uh, legal support, that can support them uh, when, when they're actually detained or hauled up by the authority.